Hello, I'm Paul Sparrow, the director of the Franklin Roosevelt Presidential Library and Museum, and we're here in the visible storage area. Uh, this is where we keep things that aren't permanently on display, but people can still see them. Now today, we're gonna go behind the scenes to take a look at FDR's ship model collection. Don't usually get to go in here, so follow me. There are more than 400 models in the collection, ranging from very small to very large. When the museum first opened, there was an entire gallery devoted to the ship models. But now, most of them are here. FDR was fascinated by ships from the time he was a small boy at his family's home in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, watching whaling ships head out to sea. There were sea captains, privateers, and maritime adventurers on both sides of his family. His great-grandfather, John Aspinwall, and his two sons owned a shipbuilding company. So let's start with them. This is a model of the Rainbow, a ship built by the Aspinwalls in 1845. It was the first of what were known as extreme clipper ships because it had a radical design that changed both the bow and where the widest part of the ship was. These ships were built for speed, not for the amount of cargo they could carry. Now this ship quickly established itself as the fastest sailing ship in the world, making the run from China to New York in 88 days. Just one month later, the Aspinwall's other extreme clipper ship, the Sea Witch, made it from Canton to New York in just 77 days. Sadly, on the same day that the Sea Witch set the record, the rainbow left port and was never seen again, presumably sunk off Cape Horn. FDR's grandfather, Warren Delano, made his fortune in the China opium trade. In the 1860s, Warren's young daughter, Sarah, and her sister and mother traveled aboard the clipper ship Surprise to go live with her father in China. While aboard this ship, Sarah kept a journal, and it's quite interesting. They lived in China for several years before returning to New York. Her tales of the Far East and her experience on a clipper ship intrigued her young son, Franklin, who acquired this model of the Surprise in 1922. This ship model of the USS Constitution was built in 1818. Uh, FDR was fascinated by this ship and its history. He collected dozens of paintings and prints and books and manuscripts about this ship. Uh, and this model was displayed prominently in the private study at the White House. Now, he bought this model in 1914 when he was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. The original owner actually was a surgeon who served on the USS Constitution. It was truly one of his most prized possessions. In addition to the many sailing ships that FDR collected, he also collected modern naval vessels. Now, this is the light German cruiser from World War I, the Emden, and it's the longest model in the collection. It's 10 feet long, and it has a particularly interesting story behind it. Uh, the Emden was part of the German fleet that surrendered to the Allies at the end of World War I when Franklin Roosevelt was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. In fact, the order to scuttle the German fleet was given from this ship. Now, Fast forward to World War II, General George Patton, during the Battle of Metz, discovers this model in the German headquarters and has it shipped back to the White House for President Roosevelt's collection because General Patton knew that Roosevelt would be particularly interested in it. This submarine, the France, was a gift to President Roosevelt from Charles de Gaulle just a few weeks after D-Day in 1944. Now, it's a very interesting model in that it actually works. Uh, it can fire the torpedoes, uh, the guns work, and the engine works and the propeller so it can actually submerge underwater. And now, FDR took this model out to the Taylor Naval Research Center just outside Washington, D.C. to test it out. Uh, after General de Gaulle left, FDR decided he wanted to give this to his grandson, Curtis. Uh, but his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, said that he couldn't, that it was a state gift and that he couldn't give it away. It actually belonged to the American public. Uh, FDR said de Gaulle was only a general. He wasn't a head of state, therefore it was not a gift and he could give it to his grandson if he wanted. Anyway, Curtis donated this to the library and we think it's a very interesting piece. There's a lot of wonderful models here in the collection, but I think this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a 1930s era wooden runabout uh, that works. It has a functioning engine. Uh, it has two cockpits. Uh, in the back cockpit, there's a little rug with FDR's initials on it. And now, this was made by an inmate in Sing Sing Prison and given to FDR when he was the governor of New York. Now, we don't know the name of the inmate, but we do know why he gave this to the governor of New York. The name of the ship, the Pardon Me.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of FDR's ship model collection. You can learn more about it on our website, fdrlibrary.org, or you can come visit us in person and see for yourself. Thanks for joining us.